Chapter 2, Section 2, Managing IP and Propel Builder. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing Propel Builder's IP catalog and how it can be used to download and install IP, as well as generate other components for use in SOC projects. So with that, let's quickly take a look at the key points for this section of the video series. The first key point for this section is for users to understand the difference between IP on local and IP on server. Aside from that, the second points are for users to understand how they can download IP from the IP server. The last few key points for this section have to do with understanding IP in the IP catalog using features like additional IP documentation and IP status indicator. The second to last key point for this section is for users to understand how to generate an IP. And finally, the last key point is to understand how to delete an IP from IP on local. So with that, let's head over to my desktop view so we can take a look at IP Catalog directly from the Propel Builder perspective. Depending on your default Propel Builder workspace parent, you may need to switch to the IP Catalog in order to view it. To do this, simply select the IP Catalog tab, as can be seen from the example on the screen, in order to switch this view from the Design View to the IP Catalog. As can be seen from the example on the screen, IP Catalog contains two main tabs, IP on Local, and IP on server. IP on local consists of all the IP that comes with Propel Builder, often referred to as foundation IP, as well as all the IP that you've downloaded from the IP server or custom IP package that you've installed, which are organized at the bottom of this tab. Something I want to point out about this section of the IP catalog is that if a project is open, only IP that are compatible with your project's target device will be available for selection. In the IP on server tab, we can see that IP are once again grouped into a few different categories, and that there is also an installed indicator next to an IP's name if that IP is already installed. A useful feature of the IP catalog is the additional IP information, which can be accessed by selecting the blue question mark icon to the right of either the IP on local or IP on server tabs. Doing this will open an additional view at the bottom of our Propel Builder window, containing additional information about an IP like a brief description, its supported devices, version history, and also documentation. With that said, once you've found an IP that you want to install, you can do so from the IP server tab by simply double-clicking the blue circle icon next to the name of the IP that you want to download. Doing this will open a user license agreement window, which you will need to agree to in order to finish downloading that IP. Unlike IP on local, all IP on the IP server will appear in this tab, regardless of whether or not that IP is compatible with our project's target device. If we take a look at the IP status indicator, by hovering our mouse over it, we can see that the memory controller IP that we just installed is not actually compatible with our current project's target device. If we navigate back to the IP on local tab, we can also see that the IP does not appear here, since it is not supported for our project's target device. To generate the other IP that we just installed, we simply need to double click it from the IP on local tab. Doing this will open the IP block wizard window, which will assist us in generating the IP for our project. The first thing that we will need to define is the name for our component, which is what the generated component will be called in its generated Verilog files. There are no limitations for the component's name, except that it cannot contain any symbolic characters or have the same name as the component that you are generating. For example, in this example, we cannot name the component i3c underscore slave, so we will instead call it i3 underscore slave underscore zero. The following page will vary depending on the IP that you're generating, as each IP will have its own different parameters. The most important takeaway from this page of the IP block wizard window is that the selections you make here will determine how your IP is generated. Once you're satisfied with your selections in this window, click generate and then finish in order to finish generating your component. Immediately after clicking finish, a define instance window will appear. The name that you define in this section is the name that your component will be instantiated using in your generated Verilog wrapper file. Something I quickly want to point out is that we can easily change some parameters for the components in our design by double clicking the IP block from our schematic view. The only requirement to change the parameters for an IP in your design is that you have that IP installed on IP on local ahead of time. Finally, the last thing I want to point out is how we can manage the IP that we install. 
The IP on local tab of the IP catalog contains all of the IP that we've installed from the IP server or using custom.ipk files. To delete an IP from IP on local, simply click the trash bin icon next to the IP's name and then click yes to remove it from your IP on local directory. Something I want to point out is that deleting an IP from IP on local that has already been generated in your project will not impact your project. The reason for this is because the files associated with the IP that was generated in the lib subdirectory of your Propel project are specific for that component in your design and are also separate from the IP in IP on local. Before we proceed on to the next section of the video series, I want to quickly point out that you can view your current IP on local subdirectory by selecting Design and then Design Options to open the Propel Builder Environment Settings window. From this pop up window, Select the Directories tab to view your current IP on local directory. If you want to switch your current IP on local directory, input the location of your new IP directory directly into the IP install path option, and enable Move IP to New Location if you want the IP from your existing IP directory to be moved over to the new one as well. That concludes this section of the video training series. To watch the next video in the series, select the video called Section 2.3 creating an SOC in Propel Builder.